atomic mass and the periodic table. So we're going to look at how atomic mass relates to the periodic table. So if you've taken a chance to look at your periodic table, you might have found that the atomic masses are not whole numbers. So we're going to look into why that is. Um, it deals with the fact that the atomic masses on the periodic table are weighted averages of all of the masses of all of the isotopes of any particular element. So we can look at the periodic table. You can see we've got hydrogen, and it has a mass of 1.008, helium 4.003, lithium is 6.941, and so on. Let's look at where we can find information on a periodic table. So the small number at the top is the atomic number. That is the number of protons. The larger number at the bottom is the mass. And so sometimes people find that they get a little bit confused with how things are organized on the periodic table versus how we just saw things organized in nuclear symbols. So here's your roll of thumb. In order to figure out which is the atomic number and the atomic mass, remember that the mass is protons plus neutrons. And therefore, it's going to be a bigger number. So the smaller number out of the two is always the atomic number. The bigger number is always the atomic mass. And that's how you can distinguish between the two, even when we have switching systems where on the periodic table, you'll find the atomic number on top and the mass on bottom, but in nuclear symbols, it's reversed. So a couple of key things to make sure you have down, and you might want to jot these down into your notes. Protons are the same as the atomic number. Neutrons is going to be the mass, subtract the atomic number. And electrons, if we're making the assumption that we have a neutral atom, will be the same as the number of protons. So here's another way you might see things on the periodic table. You might see lithium on the top there. You know this is the atomic number because it's smaller than the 6.9, and the symbol is in the middle.